Attention! McCarthy Math Academy proudly presents the Math FSA Boot Camp Series. Hello everyone, I'm Miss McCarthy and I am so excited that you are here. are more than a test score. We don't want you stressing out about this test. We just want you to activate your greatness within. And you might be saying, But Miss McCarthy, listen, I know that math is your jam, but math and I, yeah, we're not really the best of friends. You may have struggled in the past, and you know what? Good. Struggle is necessary because struggle makes us stronger. If we go over something in these videos that you're like, hmm, that skill didn't quite click yet, I'm gonna send you to more videos to help you practice. Your teachers and I, we can expose you to all kinds of tools and strategies, but you have to choose to use them. You have to choose to own them. Imagine opening up that test and feeling so excited to throw down your best. This can be your reality. So now is the time that you need to activate the person you were born to be and let's do this. Are you ready to throw 100% focus, hustle, and heart into this right now? That's what I'm talking about, yes! Okay, let's go ahead and jump on into today's episode of the Math FSA Bootcamp Series. And <laughs> I almost forgot to say, uh, let me teach ya. What is happening third grade? Welcome to the Math FSA Boot Camp Series. This is video number 15. All right, so you know how we do it. What I want you to do is go ahead and pause the video and solve number one and number two on your own. That means that you should have the worksheet. If you don't know which worksheet I'm talking about, go ahead and check the link below or somewhere around this video and which will take you to a place where you can download the worksheet that you need for this episode along with the other episodes in the third grade math FSA boot camp series. All right, so pause the video, solve number one and number two, throw down your best, mark up your text, show your work, and then come on back to check your work. All right, third grade, welcome back. Let's go ahead and check your work. So the very first thing that we need to pay attention to is this question type right here. So I'm seeing one, two, three, four answer choices. So what kind of question is this? It's a multiple choice question. Jot that down if you did not already. All right, now that we know it's a multiple choice question, let's read and mark up our text. So it says, which statement, they're calling it these, the statements down here, correctly compares, that means that we're looking for less than, greater than, or equal to the fractions. And fractions, we have a numerator and a denominator. All right, so I am seeing the fraction 5 eighths and 5 sixths for each. It's so hard for me to say six. Six. Five sixths. Six. 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 It sounds like I'm beatboxing here. Okay, so we have two fractions, five eighths and five sixths. And what we need to do is compare them and see which one of these is correct. So here is how I compare them. I do it two ways. First, I model with a drawing. And the second way is checking with cross multiplication. All right. So because we're comparing two fractions, let's make a rectangle. Just like that. Two fractions. So I'm going to cut it in half. And I will model five eighths on top and five sixths. <laughs> on the bottom. So because they are both even, that means that I can go, I'm gonna pop out of the frame here for a second. It means that I can go straight down the middle and for eights, I can do four and four. So four parts here, make four parts there. And now I have eights. And here I would, for six, I would need three parts and three parts to get me a six. Okay, now let's shade it in. So our denominator, the one that's down or below, told us how many parts to divide it into. Our numerator tells us what to consider or what to shade. 
You see that number on top? That's called the numerator. It describes the amount that is being considered. So I shade in five. And when you jump down from the fraction bar denominator, it's the total number of equal parts. Sure, love me some fractions. All right, now let's do five sixths. You see that number on top? That's called the numerator. It describes the amount that is being considered out of six total parts. Okay, so just by looking at my drawing, which one goes further? Five eighths stops right there and five sixths goes all the way to right there. So which one is greater? Yeah, five sixths. And actually I could solve this without even drawing it out just with this mathematical reasoning because I know that six parts and eight parts, if I have six parts in one whole, those parts are going to be larger than eight little pieces in that same hole. So I should have known that when I shaded in five of those six pieces, five out of the six, that I would be shading in more. Okay, so that's one way to compare. So we need something that looks like this. Five eighths is less than five sixths or backwards five sixths is greater than five eighths. And we should see that right here, right, B. So I'm gonna put a question mark real quick by B and I just wanna use cross multiplication real quick to check. Okay, so what you do is you take, you go, eight times five is party rocking with the apes for sure. Eight, 16, 24, 32, 40, 40. That's my multiplication mashup helps me learn my facts faster. And now six times five, I'll do the six song and count five fingers up. Hey sixes, I just met ya. You're kinda crazy. Six, 12 and 18, 24 and 30. 30, okay. So which, so which product, product is, greater? is greater? 30, 30 or, 40? or 40? 40, 40, right? right? So we're, so we're going, going to open, to open up, up Carl, Carl the Crocodile. The crocodile. He, he, always always the he always wants the greater number and he always wants the Greater, greater fraction, fraction associated, associated with that, with that product. product. So, so five, five six, six is, greater. is greater. We proved, we proved it. it. It's not this one because five eighths is not greater. It is this one. They are not equal. And here, this is basically saying the same thing as A, just flipped around. So C. All right, let's take a look at the next one. Okay. So first let's identify the question type. I see rows, I see columns. It's my favorite kind of question. It's a matching item question. Wow. it says to match the expression, which are down there with the correct inequality sign. Ooh, just like that. Okay. Um, I guess I'm a little bit confused because equal is the opposite of inequal. So, yeah. Anyway. Okay. So we need to compare the two sets of fractions. So let's do it. I'm going to compare it using a model and cross multiplication to check. And I'm kind of going to do this quickly. If you know that you need some more help with comparing fractions, I'm going to point you in the direction of some more videos where I break down teaching it. That way you can master it. All right. Here, I'm kind of assuming that you know it and we're focusing more on the test prep question style of it. So just stay tuned until the end and I will point you in the direction of those videos, okay? So first we have three tenths and three eighths. Okay, so here I have my tenths and here I have my eighths and they look kind of similar but I do know that there's that the 10 pieces that it takes to make up that one whole, they are smaller than the eights. So really three eights should be larger. I'm shading in three in each because I've got three eights and three tenths. And look, the three eights goes a little bit longer than three tenths. And now let's use cross multiplication to make sure. Achoo! Eight times three, party rocking with the eights for sure. Eight, 16, 24, got it. Product of 24. 10 times three, is it too late to learn your tensies? 10, 20, 30, stop right there, please. All right, which one is greater, 30 or 24? 
30, which means the fraction associated with it, 3 eighths, is the larger fraction. So we need, I did this backwards, but we need the inequality symbol to be going towards the 3 eighths. So we need it to look like this. So which one looks like that? A, B, or C? A, right? Awesome. All right, next one. We've got four thirds and four fifths. Well, they both have the same numerator. They have different denominators. And I know that thirds are bigger pieces than fifths. So I'm gonna guess that four thirds is correct. Two fractions, so let's model them. I'll model four thirds up top and I'll more model four fifths down below. Okay, so thirds. There we go, and fifths. There we go, okay. So for thirds, I'm gonna go ahead and shade in four parts. One, two, three. I ran out of parts, so I need to draw another hole that's broken into thirds again. Okay, so I have one, two, three, four thirds. Awesome. And now I need to draw four fifths. One, two, three, four. All right, so which one is greater? Yeah, four thirds goes a lot longer. So we need to make sure it's our sign is pointing in the direction of four thirds, which makes sense because of my prediction, because thirds are bigger pieces than fifths. Let's use cross multiplication to check, even though I know for sure we're good here. I just like to multiply and sing the multiplication mashup, okay? All right, threes. Hit me with my threes pretty, please. Three, six, nine, 12. Get four fingers up and you count. Four of the threes is 12 and then fives. The five song, four fingers up. Ah, nah, here come the fives. Five, 10, 15, 20. 20, yeah. Which one is greater, 20 or 12? 20. So we'll have Carl the crocodile eat that 20. And now, which is also associated with the four thirds side. So we are correct in saying that four thirds is greater. So which one is the sign that we need? D, E, or F? E, yep, this one right here. See how it matches up? Be careful with these. E. Alrighty, last one. We have one and a half and three halves. So right here, this is a mixed number, MN mixed number, because we have a whole number and we have a fraction. Here is a fraction greater than one because our numerator is greater than our denominator. So both of these are going to have more than one whole piece. Let's try drawing one and a half. I'm gonna go ahead and draw two. So I already know it's gonna be one and then some. So here are my two rectangles. I'm gonna split them in half because I've got two fractions that I'm comparing. Well, one's a mixed number, one's a fraction greater than one. Okay, for the first one, for one and one half, that means we need one whole thing shaded in. So go all the way, that whole bar on top can go. And for the other one, we'll place the half. There we go. For the next one, we have three halves, all right? So I need to cut each in half and go one, two, three. They look equal, don't they? Yeah, these are definitely equal. So which which one should we select? G, H, or I? I, right? Because they are definitely equal. We have the same number of parts. This is one whole and one half, and then three halves would be two halves and one half, which makes it three halves. So yes, awesome. Now I promised you to point you in the direction of some more videos. So let's go ahead and get to that. All right, third grade. So if you know that you need some more practice with fractions, modeling them, comparing them, then I want you to check out the link below that or somewhere around this video for McCarthy Math 155. This is a high energy jam packed series with almost an episode for each day of the school year. So many students, so many 
schools are using this as a math intervention support program. So check this out. You want to go to unit eight because that covers fractions. Now you do have to become a member in order to watch these videos, but everyone gets a free seven day trial to check it out and see if it's right for them. All right. So totally free. Go ahead and check it out for seven days and watch as many videos, print as many worksheets as you want um, for those seven days. And then after that, if you're like, hey, this is going to be awesome, especially teachers. If you're like, yeah, I could totally use this with my students. And by the way, you can share these videos with your students. There's a tutorials tab on my website that explains how to do that. So teachers feel free to do that. But yeah, this could totally help you out. So please check it out. The next link that I want you to focus on is to the how to pass the math FSA series for third grade. Now, the video that I have linked below is to the same skill, the same standard that we worked on in this video. The how to pass the math FSA series was one of the first that I created and I created it back when the FSA was a computer based test. It's not a computer based test anymore. So as you're working through some of the problems, just know that they're going to look a little bit different because they're paper based now. That's why I created the math FSA boot camp to reflect the paper based test that you will take this year. Also, you heard me sing in the multiplication mash up throughout this video. So millions of people have watched this song. I cannot believe that. That's crazy. Um, it's awesome, but it's helping so many students to learn their multiplication facts or to arrive at the answer a little bit faster than drawing them all out. Please go check that out. It's super fun. Third grade, you will love it. I also encourage you to follow me on my social media platforms. I'm on Instagram and Facebook at McCarthy Math Academy, and I'm also on YouTube of course, at McCarthy Math Academy. If you're watching this on YouTube, if you could please smash that like button, that would be so awesome. Not just to make me feel good, but because I'm on a mission, y'all, to make math fun, make it click and make it stick for as many third, fourth, and fifth graders as possible. So when you click that like button, it'll send more students in my direction so I can help them because I hate seeing kids struggle so much with math. Struggle's good for you, but I also want to help you. I don't want it to be something that you dread all the time. Math is awesome. Awesome. It's so much fun. A lot of kids who are working on McCarthy Math 155 are finding that they understand math for the first time. So again, check that out. Um, also, thank you for liking this video. All right, while you're at it, go ahead and subscribe. That way you're the first to know when I drop a new video. And finally, before we go, I just want you to know that you were created for a reason. 